Oh, that's me. me. Great. Thank you very much. Um, good evening. I'm now calling the Tuesday, November 14th, 2023, Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners Ad Hoc Budget Subcommittee for fiscal year 2024-25 meeting to order. I do believe that's the longest title of any meeting I, I've been involved with. Whew. It's a whole sentence in itself. Time is 7.05 p.m. And as a reminder, uh, this is an ad hoc subcommittee, which is not subject to the meeting rules required under the Brown Act and will not take any action at tonight's meeting. Um, we're conducting this in a hybrid format, which allows the subcommittee members and staff and members of the public to attend via virtual teleconference. This meeting will be is being video recorded and will be posted on the district's website. Uh, please practice considerate video conferencing etiquette by muting your line when you're not speaking and limiting distracted behavior on camera, including those us of the dais. District Clerk Vargas, could you please conduct a roll call? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, President Spring. Here. Commissioner Basigi. Here. Commissioner McDonald. Here. All right, and we have three of our ad hoc budget subcommittee commission members present which is all of them. And um, for the benefit of the recording, I will also conduct a roll call of our fiscal team members. Finance Manager Morreale. Present. General Manager Logan. Present. Municipal Resource Group St Strategic Planning Consultant Scott. Here. Thank you. Emergency Services Manager BB. Present. Communication, Community Education and Risk Reduction Manager Gluham. Here. Present. And the fiscal team members are accounted for. Great, thank you very much. We will now move on to item 2A, which is some opening remarks. Um, just to set the context for this, at the September 19th, 2023 regular commission meeting, uh, our board of commissioners established in this very ad hoc budget subcommittee for fiscal year 2024-25 and appointed myself, Commissioner Besigi and Commissioner McDonald to serve as members. The focus of this meeting is to meet with the fiscal team members to receive and discuss their fiscal year 24-25 preliminary draft budget. This committee will provide, or this subcommittee will provide our guidance, comments, and perspectives to staff to incorporate into this draft budget, which we presented to the full commission for the first time at the Tuesday, November 21st, 2023 regular commission meeting. So uh, just some remarks here. Yeah, I've been on this a budget ad hoc subcommittee here. I've lost track of how many years. I can't remember the first one I was here. And the one thing I can say is that the function of this meeting has evolved tremendously over the years in direct relation to how the district itself has evolved, which is to say, I mean, the district has grown in both its accomplishments and its abilities. And this meeting reflects that. I mean, originally when this district had no permanent staff uh, and it was just Corey and, and commissioners, uh, almost all the work was done by the commissioners themselves. And, and this budgeting process in this meeting was actually where we did our work planning. Uh, it was bottom up, you know, what should we be working on one year in the future? What number should we put in this cell? It was that kind of meeting. Uh, and the subcommittee would have multiple meetings as we sort of put something together and, and she'd go collate it. And then we'd come back and say, oh, wait, that doesn't make sense. And we'd iterate over it. So and before we bring it to the commission, but over the course of the last five, five years, I guess it's been, we have step by step put in all the pieces that really you expect a professional organization to be doing for budget process. And there are three key things now that we didn't have then. First, a strategic plan by which we navigate and set our overall course and really tie everything to. Uh, second, thanks to Corey and Russ, we've evolved to a much more robust financial and budgeting framework. As you saw, for example, last year was the first time we actually had the themes and it started from strategic plan went, was the first page of the budgeting process. Um, and so we're not building from scratch. I mean, we're really starting with a framework that really gives us something sophisticated. And third, and thanks to incredible staff efforts, we now have detailed multi-year work plans already laid out, you know, independent of the budgeting, the, the things we want, the projects we want to take on, what kind of resources we need for these things. And we already know our tactical projects and the resources have to go together. And we can start from there to decide what we do in the year's future. So it's a much different process, much easier, frankly. Uh, it sets us more as reviewers than participants. Um, but the goal of this meeting is still the same, which is to help staff. That's what we're here for. I want to emphasize that, to provide feedback to staff. Um, so we'll assist in 
in just our reactions are helpful to staff. Does it make sense? Are we shocked by it? Are we happy with it? Do we understand it? Anything like that that gives them a first sense of, hey, it holds together. We got some commissioners that seem to understand what's going on here is, is great help for the staff. So it's appropriate for us to point out where things don't make sense or could be clearer. Um, and we wanna make sure it's clear so we first present it next month uh, in some somewhat of a summary fashion and certainly in January in a much more detailed fashion. And then, uh, finally, one other thing I want to mention for anyone who's, who's watching, especially members of the public um, and who may watch it on video, an important purpose for this meeting is transparency. This is a long process. I mean, people don't realize that, you know, this started, I, I don't know, at least a month ago, if not two months ago, and it's going to go all the way to, through next May. And this is really through June, I guess, when it actually gets approved. Because um, that was our June of this year was when we approved the budget for this year. So it go through June for next year. Uh, it's a long process and people may not understand it, but the residents deserve a chance to see where did it start? And if they're interested in it, where do people start talking about how our tax money is going to be spent? This is the first chance the public gets to see of how that's coming together. So it's really important for, the, for them to see, even in an early stage, everything may change. We may hate what we see. We may love what we see, but the public gets to see that this is how it's done. So that's what I wanted to say about this meeting, which really has evolved. I want people to ask when they say, why are we here? What are we doing? That's, you know, I've been lucky and fortunate to have a very you know, multi-year view of this meeting. And it really is here to, to provide staff our unfiltered comments. So anyway, thank you so much for, for listening to me drone on. We will now move on to item 2B, which, please. Uh, how long will the uh, I think we, had, we put an end date on it through in the spring. February 2nd is, is when the, um, no. we submit the, the draft to um, OBA. Yeah, once we really work, especially once we work on it in front of the commission in detail, which will probably be mostly in January. And Frank, I, I don't necessarily believe we may need a second meeting for this if, this, if our comments here are sufficient. We may continue to work with them without a public meeting because we can, as an ad hoc committee, we can do that as well. But once we go into the, January is really full commission, you know, at that point, we'll become just part of the commission. And so I expect our, our need as a separate body will be, will wane. So is that a good, does that help? Any other questions? Great. Okay, now moving on to an appointment of a, a chair for this meeting, to run this meeting. Uh, we need to decide who will conduct this meeting and sort of serve as the chair of tonight's meeting. Would anyone here like to volunteer? He, well, he wants to volunteer as well, so therefore I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some seniority on this okay. one, I, and uh, I will happy to pass off the I chair to you. No, oh, volunteer. In that case, I'm going to, I've got a volunteer here to actually take the chair. I'm going to let, go. Okay. so I'm happy to pass off the chair to me. Okay. Um, thank you. We will now move on to item 2C to introduce the fiscal team members. Oh, okay. Sorry. Two C. Okay, great. So, um, we just wanted uh, to let you know that tonight's presentation it's it's going to be um, presented by Russ Morialli, our finance manager, myself in the hat of financial consultant and of course, Jay Logan, our general manager. Um, but we had great help as well from uh, Marcy Scott, our strategic planning consultant who helped us to tie um, the budget in with all those work plans that you saw at the last commission meeting. And we also had help from Eugenia Woods, the program's planning grants manager, Victoria Beebe, our emergency services manager, and Denise Gluhan, our community education and risk reduction manager. So. All right, the uh, fiscal year 2024, 2025 preliminary draft budget is being presented to us tonight by finance manager Morali, financial consultant Vargas and general manager Logan. We will now move on 
to item 2D to receive the presentation of the FY 2024-2025 preliminary draft budget. I'm sorry. Hello? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, General Manager Logan, please introduce the items. Uh, thank you, Chair McDonald and Commissioner Budget Subcommittee. I'm most pleased to present the fiscal team's report to you tonight and to hear your comments, your perspectives, and your guidelines. As we, as we as staff work on the budget, we align it with the work plan, the strategic plan, and we often wonder if we're hitting the mark as the commission envisions us to do. Tonight is the opportunity for us to hear from the subcommittee, take their comments and questions under submission as necessary and reframe or retool the materials prior to presentation to the board of commissioners at its meeting on November 21st. Tonight is a sounding board check-in with the subcommittee for us. To take us through the budget presentation, Finance Manager Russell Morreale has forged for us a new and transformative method of aligning our fiscal dollars with the strategic plan and the work plan service areas. Russ has stretched our vision and provided us with the tools to reimagine the budget process for the service area managers. So with that, Russ, I'd like to introduce you and please lead us the way. Thank you, General Manager Logan. And uh, thank you for those kind words. It really is a team effort and involves so many people. Uh, I'm just facilitating it and it's a honor and pleasure to do so. Um, good evening, subcommittee members, um, Spring to CG and McDonald. Uh, we're really pleased to present the fiscal year 24-25 preliminary draft budget for the first in a series of public meetings. Uh, as President, President Spreen mentioned, uh, as well as General Manager Logan, there's really no action items uh, that are being requested this evening. Rather, it's just an opportunity for the ad hoc to provide observations, ask questions, and really we're looking for your perspective on the fiscal plan as it has developed. General Manager Logan, Financial Consultant Vargas, and I will tag team tonight on the presentation. I will start with an introduction and present the overall strategy and basic approach uh, taken in building the draft budget. I will also provide a high level overview of the numbers as proposed. I will then pass it off to Corey who will go through budget revenues uh, by and expenditures by category. And General Manager Logan will also pick up and discuss uh, fire services in particular and staffing levels. Uh, we will accept comments at the end of the presentation uh, with a plan to prepare a very similar presentation to the full commission next week um, November 21st, I believe that is, uh, and, and certainly include your comments and your observations that we garner this evening. Next slide, please. The timeline for the draft budget is, is really, it is, is a, it is a long process, but it's also on a rapid pace. And it's a pace that began right after the year-end audit that was provided to the commission just this past uh, month. Um, this will be followed by the first draft delivery in November to the full commission. And then we will come back to the commission, the district commission in January and February as well for a final draft before it moves on to the county. The draft will be submitted to the Santa Clara County Office of Budget and Analysis in February to meet their county of counties um, debt, uh, timelines for the final adoption. And the county plans to adopt the budget ultimately in June of 2024. At that time, staff will return to the um, district commission in June of 24 for final approval of the county adopted budget. This year, we took a deliberate and targeted, targeted focus uh, to place the budget and align it specifically with the operational work plans that were presented to the commission just this past month. As we present this budget this evening, uh, keep the work plans in mind, um, as it is our hope uh, that we certainly achieved our goal of identifying those initiatives that were important in the work plan and allocating funds accordingly. Next slide, please. As General Manager Logan mentioned, we, we pulled heavily on the service area managers this year. 
because they are the ones who created the work plans. And certainly they're the ones that should be involved in the budget estimates that you see before you this evening. In fact, behind the scenes, as I will exemplify later uh, in later slides coming up, we are in the process of creating internal operational budgets by service area, something that we've never done before. This marks a paradigm shift in the budget creation and internal reporting process, uh, but it's just in its initial phases and you won't see that evolve fully until the end of 24, 25, and you'll probably see it fully realized in the 25, 26 budget in terms of format uh, and design. Just to remind uh, the um, ad hoc members, the core service areas that we really looked at very closely uh, had to deal with integrated hazardous fuel reductions. So that's led by Eugenia Woods, uh, fire emergency and medical response, of course, that's a core service area, outreach and emergency preparation. Um, and that is a Victoria Bebe, Bebe is a service area manager in that area and community education and risk re reduction, risk uh, reduction that is led by Denise Gluhan. We really do wanna thank all the service area managers for their hard work and their participation. We could not have done this without them. Next slide, please. Last year, staff brought a budget to the commission that was bold, we called it bold at that time, in that it was requesting the resources necessary to optimize service delivery. Um, and we reinforced, this was reinforced by the newly adopted strategic plan. Um, and it was, it really asked for much needed staffing, capital equipment, contract services, and professional services. The draft budget before you for fiscal year 24, 25, continues this alignment with strategic goals um, and its focus on preservation of life and property safety uh, and, and regionalization with the, our surrounding neighbors. It continues that. But we continue this budget this year where the last year left off. It, it reflects, we think, a more concentrated effort on aligning budget allocations with service deliverables, which you can see in the work plans. This budget strives to connect the district mission to the strategic plan, to, to, to service area work plans at arriving at a budget which we believe is more meaningful and targeted in its allocations. So that's how we morphed the themes this year to bring us to that next level of reporting from our perspective. Next slide, please. Key approach taken this year is presented on this slide. Um, this tries to communicate the guiding principles that we took on uh, as we developed the budget. And this really goes way back to the August 4th work plan meeting that we held in August with all the managers. The principles we followed this year are as follows. We really wanted to increase service deliverables, del deliverables for the residents with an emphasis on core programs and services. We wanted to enhance momentum on programs that have gained synergy over the past year or two and really keep that synergy going. We wanted to dedicate planning and procurement necessary to initiate large projects, to phase them suitably, and to apply resources appropriately. And in doing so, we wanted to leverage contract services as much as possible to achieve our objectives. Lastly, though, we took a look at our historical trends and we also wanted to make a move to close the gap between budget allocations and budget estimates and actual funds spent. Uh, we're tr we tried our hardest also to not only uh, fund our key initiatives, but also develop a more realistic and achievable budget while still allowing for the unknowns. Uh, and I hope as you review this budget this evening, you'll see that these principles are in play throughout. And this was really our guiding mission um, really following the August 4th planning session that we had as a team uh, a few months ago. Next slide, please. The draft budget finds the district in very good financial standing. That's consistent uh, with the audit that was just approved by the commission this past month. Accordingly, this budget again projects, projects a very healthy and growing beginning of your fund balance that preserves prior year established commitments. 
We again anticipate positive growth in fund balances over the prior year, bringing the opening fund balance to a level of $42 million. These positive fund balances will also flow into the fiscal year 24-25 projections. The budget also, though, continues its, its uh, emphasis on the core mission as displayed by the pie chart in front of you. Including all changes submitted this year, the draft budget applies 72% of all expenditures, expenditures towards essential fire, life, and safety services. 48% are for contract fire and emergency medical services. 24% for life and safety community projects, which the district supplements. And then there's an additional 3% for district owned capital that really does support um, the, the safety missions of the, of the um, uh, district. So as built, um, the draft budget proposes a use of fund balance this year of $1.5 million and keeps its focus on its main mission, which is life, property, safety, and prevention. Next slide, please. Yes. There is something yes. here that I, I, because perhaps because of my own uh, shortcomings, I don't quite understand. We have three line items here. The one is for the uh, Santa Clara County Central Fire District uh, to the tune of six, so over six million. And then we have um, a battalion chief, which is 1.5 million. And then we augmented fire staff, which is uh, 0.55 million, something in that range. Um, but I, the augmented staff, I understand, but why have we broken, or why is it traditionally, are we breaking the battalion chief from this, uh, from Santa Clara County Central Fire District? What are the distinction between those two functions? Well, yeah, well, they, well go ahead, go ahead, Jay. I can respond to that. So we have a fire and emergency medical services agreement with Central Fire. And that is the area that's depicted in the brown area. That's a 10 year agreement. Now, in addition to that fire and services agreement, which is a three party agreement, it's Central Fire, Los Altos Hills County Fire District and the city of Los Altos. So in addition to that agreement, we have separate contract agreements. In fact, I'm going to cover that when I speak about emergency fire services and suppression. We have separate contracts and those contracts are just between the board of commissioners and central fire to hire an additional battalion chief, additional fire safety personnel, run uh, Palo Alto Fire Station 8, and at some points in times, we have additional apparatuses or equipment on the apparatus. So those are separated out from the uh, initial fire services agreement. Got it, thank you. So yeah. what there is, uh, in, terms of, in terms of functions they perform, is there any distinction between those two in terms of day-to-day -day functions and what they do? Uh, so they, they all, um, cooperate, all of the functions cooperate with each other. So we have a, a larger fire crew at El Monte Station and they have a 24 uh, seven round the clock battalion chief. It's about a million three hundred thousand dollars a year, which would not be there were it not for that supplemental agreement. Got it, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's and similarly good. with the other positions. So they're entered into in separate contracts. I would say also on red flag days, high yes. fire danger days, they sometimes, besides the Wildland Type 3 engine, they will also staff, it's called a Type 6 engine, which is a smaller kind of a pickup truck miniature fire engine. So they augment the staffing for high fire dangers. Okay, who, ma who manages that particular thing you just mentioned, Toby? So um, what occurs is it's all done under central fire, but the fire chief or the assistant fire chief will call me and say we've got a red in fact it happened you know here yeah. you know recently within the last month and we've got that burst of heat un unusually with you know with the red flag conditions they'll call and they'll say we have this uh issue coming up with red flag warning we have um cool temperatures but very um high uh, low humidity and wind and so we'd like to restaff fire station eight and put uh, extra personnel on, on board, is that okay? So it's, it's that cooperative agreement. That's the Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're the funding agency, oh, so it yeah, needs to be okay with yeah. the funder. Well, what I'm saying, your, 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 your approval is needed to. 
Yes, go to yes, the Lord. Go yes. Ahead. Yeah. Thank you. And that's really why we talk so much about regionalization and cooperation and how important it is because none of us can do this job alone. We've got to have that synergy between the partners working well together. And we've got to have the, the foundation of the agreement so we understand what the roles and responsibilities of the parties are. And then we can adjust and adapt as nature makes us adjust and adapt and not be behind the eight ball, so to speak, and be on top of things for our residents. Thank you. Yeah. Just another comment on a larger scale on the Cal, the state scale, Cal Fire, when there's a red flag warning in certain areas of the state, they will pre-position extra apparatus in those areas so that if something does happen, right. they have the equipment closer by instead of waiting for a day or so to get that equipment. Fantastic, thank you. Sure, thanks. Okay, thank, thank you, General Manager Logan. Thank you, Russ. So if you look at the chart in front of you, uh, I'm basically um, asking the question, how does the draft budget compare to the budget that we adopted last year? Um, this chart reflects uh, a budget that is lower than total absolute do dollars, going from 19.02 million to 17.78 million, that's $1.2 million less. Um, but it is a budget in fiscal year 24, 25 that is just as life and property safety attentive and robust as the last year. Um, as mentioned, the fiscal year 24, 25 budget allocates 72% of all resources to life and safety property. Uh, and that amount is proportionally consistent with the 70% reported in the prior year. Actually, you know, in that 72%, I do not include uh, staffing, but if I were to take a portion of staffing um, and allocate it to life and property safety, um, I would say our percentage of allocation of resources to core services is really in the high 80% level. But for purposes of this percentages, I just took the direct costs related to those contracts and the augmented services. Closer view of the comparative pie charts uh, tell us tells us that while 2.1 that uh, there was a 2.1 million dollar fire truck allocation that falls out of the 23-24 uh, budget, um, the fiscal year 24-25 budget maintains a greater share uh, of allocation of safety and projects and programs and further enhances staffing in accordance with the strategic plan to build community resources. So if you really look at the budgets in comparison, you'll see that one big change is that last year we had a $2.1.25 million fire truck that is no longer in the current year budget. Uh, but you'll see accordingly where we did enhance uh, is staffing and we did enhance um, life and safety projects in particular. Uh, this budget also reflects takeaways, if you will, of one-time one -time, one -time items that were included in the fiscal year 23-24 uh, budget. And that's an item that we'll discuss later as we get more into the detail. So in essence, we have a budget that's lower, but just as powerful in terms of life and property uh, attentiveness. Uh, it omits the fire truck, but it, it, it shows an increase uh, in pro project programs and projects and staffing levels, and also an attention to uh, contract services as well. So that's how the numbers compare uh, between the two years. Next slide, please. This might be an easier way to explain the differences. If you look at this chart uh, in particular, this shows a side-by-side -side comparison of the prior year and the fiscal year 24-25. Um, the current year is, is displayed in orange and the prior year in the blue color. Uh, if you draw your eyes to the circled area, it really shows where the budget action is. Namely, uh, the takeout of the fire truck and the fire allocation, you can see that drop under that bucket um, and other one-time allocations. You'll also see an increase in life and safety projects and programs. And you'll also see an increase in staffing. staffing. Uh, that in essence uh, is really the big picture in terms of explaining the delta between the two years. I might also note, you might also notice too, on the very left hand, if you look at the core uh, central fire contracts and fire services, uh, those are untouched uh, and unchanged and reflect the natural increase that happens from a cost of living increase in line with their contract. 
So services stayed the same. Uh, and in fact, we've enhanced in several areas as well. And that, that compares, that gives you your year-to-year -year comparison. Next slide, please. Um, question? Yes. One more question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, funding for the apparatus, the, uh, the fire truck that we are talking about to the tune of 2,125,000, has that money, the money has been allocated. Has the truck been accrued or, uh, or has it not been? And if not, what happens if the uh, if there's, we slip out of the window? So uh, Central mm -hmm. Fire Central mm -hmm. Fire and the um, manufacturer are in negotiations as to the procurement of the fire truck, and with supply chain delays, all of that is being you know worked worked out with County Council and then those those two parties, and we're the funding agency. So once it gets ready to be funded, then we would allocate the dollars. Or we've got the dollars allocated. We would we would then transfer the dollars. So this two two point one million dollars a floating budget that kind of it's it's still in our um, it's still within our revenues, right, Corey? It it, it remains in our it remains in our current year current year budget. Um, and uh, as I'll mention a, a little later, but we might as well get to it now because it's a great question. Um, to the extent that we do not fund or pay for that fire engine this year. Um, we will approach the county to roll it forward into 24-25. Um, this is the first time we've done such a roll forward, but we've met with them early on, and that is a viable option for us. So it's, it's very um, possible um, that if we don't fund this fire truck, which we may not this year, um, that soon after we pass the adopted budget in June, the county then will add back in the $2 million dollars uh, on top of what is adopted, but that remains to okay. be discussed going forward. Yeah, that's the part that was I missing. That the fact that they'll be able to reallocate to this year's budget again. I mean, no, next year's budget. Right. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Great. Great question. Thank you. Okay. And on this next slide, uh, so in a bit, I'm going to hand it off to Corey to go through all the budget of revenues. Um, but I did want to take uh, a, a couple of slides just to summarize the key changes that you'll see emanate through the line items. Uh, the first line slide indicates the most material prior allocations that have been appropriately removed from the 24-25 budget. And we do this because we know the county um, will accordingly do the same when they give us our first draft of our budget once we submit it. They will go ahead also and take out what they consider one-time items. So as I mentioned previously, the fire truck is the most notable one-time item given its high value of $2.1 million. Uh, and again, uh, as uh, uh, Commissioner uh, CG mentioned, um, if this is not funded, funded, we will approach the county and request roll forward eligibility, uh, which means they will add it back in the budget after it's adopted. We will make sure to um, uh, forward this request to the county and make sure that that, um, that request is activated should it be needed. There were also a couple other one-time items that we took out of the budget, and that is um, $225,000 for the um, purchase of two district vehicles. Um, that's a non-repeatable expenditure and $150,000 for a one-time um, assessment of the fire facility. Again, uh, if either of those are not accomplished, uh, the roll forward trigger would also be uh, open to us if we need it. On the next slide. The allocations on this chart represent net, net increases in a variety of areas. Uh, they're not the absolute dollar value of the line items, but the net change, if you will, increase of the dollar items. For, so one of the most important in this particular budget is an $800,000 increase uh, to advance the internal funding uh, of the I-280 fuel break project. This is just the beginning phases of a multi-million dollar three-year, three to four-year project, um, but we put a million dollars in this budget compared to the 200,000 last year uh, for an $800,000 increase. You'll see $358,000 of an increase um, in the fire and battalion chief service contracts. That again is just uh, a normal routine increase in line with their um, 
um, contract, we anticipated the maximum COLA uh, given the high inflation rates. You'll see a $400,000 increase for enhanced defensible space chipping and debris removal. And it, it goes without, it's very obvious that this is a growing and very popular program. So the increase in this project and program allocation is clearly warranted. Um, likewise, you'll see a $315,000 increase in, in uh, evacuation routes. Uh, the team has been doing a fantastic job in the evacuation routes. Um, they're positioned to complete several during the year. And we kept that momentum uh, going for the next year as well, uh, because we believe that program is firing on all, all cylinders. Uh, we also included new funding, and this would take some discussion uh, between the general manager and, and, and the county uh, of $250,000 for a wildfire early detection technology system, not to pay for all of it, but to potentially supplement uh, that portion that would benefit the district. So that's in there as a placeholder for potential funding on that important type of technology. There's also new funding, uh, go ahead. Um, just a quick question, uh, just a comment on this slide. Uh, since this, you know, I'm looking at these slides as which ones will be most valuable to do the whole commission to kind of summarize things. And this is one of the very valuable ones. If you could include both for the ones that are increases, if you could include the percentage increase as well here, mm -hmm. it's hard to tell, okay, is that a lot? Is it a little, I can't get a sense of it. So um, good point. Yes, great point. I will include, include the percentage increases uh, as well uh, for those. Uh, of course, the the I-280 is substantial. It went from 200,000 to 800 to a million. So almost a five, you know a four time uh, increase. And that's and, totally fine. So it's just, yes. By the way, I really like the previous slide with the bar charts. That was the one of the most valuable ones as well. So I could really get a sense of it because um, in terms of grasping what these things are. So that's, what, that's what's missing from this slide is I can't compare it very well to the without the percentages on the increases. Very good. We will include that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. There's also um, uh, $100,000 of new funding for the performance of a district-wide EIR uh, to assist uh, the IH. FR uh, programs and support the CWPP uh, process as well. That's a new, a new uh, thought, a new concept uh, included in the service area budget for IHFR, and that's completely 100% uh, new. There is new funding for the possibility of purchasing portable technology equipment for uh, a possible uh, technology center in the case of a disaster, not an EOC per se, but a place where staff could com get come together, have access to uh, laptops and different varieties of equipment to um, uh, look uh, work on a disaster and communicate effectively. So we're looking at that possibility uh, and we put funding in for that. And there was also a $50,000 increase um, to advance temporary refuge areas. So those are some of the increases in that area. And I, I have a question mm -hmm. when, while you're on this particular page. First of all, um, have we done any groundwork on the uh, funding of on the wildfire early detection to know what kind of capabilities are you looking for and what, what, it, what it's going to entail? Is $250 enough? Is it not enough? And or is it a multi-year project, that kind of stuff? Or is it just an investigation that we're spending 250K on? Yeah, so very quickly, um, I'll just refer to the Board of Supervisors meeting about a month ago now. And Board Supervisor Otto Lee brought a referral forward to uh, the county executive asking for a study on uh, the early detection wildfire uh, systems and ask that that study include the fire districts, including Los Altos Hills. So then I was approached by Otto Lee's office to, uh, to participate in comments to Otto Lee in the memorandum report that went to him and it went to the Board of Supervisors. So I'm working with Central Fire to put together how we're going to respond to that. It's probably going to come back to the Board of Supervisors in the spring of, tw of 24 and um, will be again regionalized with uh, the components of central fire because there's all different kinds of technology 
And there's a lot of sales out there in technology right now in these early wildfire detection systems. And there's cameras, there's air detectors, there's um, radiant heat detectors, there's, there's various kinds of technology and all of those have to be looked at. And I think one of the leaders right now in that whole technology space is CAL FIRE. Uh, they're doing tremendous things with AI and through their camera systems. But those are uh, wildland areas. They're not urban areas. Okay. So we've got to put that perspective in there too. There's a lot of filters that have to be looked at. Like where are these cameras, where are these detectors going to go? Is it urban or is it, you know, a wilderness? Hold it makes more. a big difference. Yeah. So thank you. So to answer his question, it's, we don't really know how the studies and the technology is going to merge, but because it's going to be a regional thing, this is an appropriate amount to yes. have for us to be able to go into a study or buy some equipment if we need to. Yes. Okay. So it's just a placeholder at the moment. A placeholder. Okay, thank yeah. You. I think a good faith placeholder, you know, recognizing the regionalization that's going to take place with these wildfire detection systems. They're not going to be by agency. I hope not because that's yeah. way too segre se se segregated. They've got to be a, 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 co a cooperative network throughout the entire county that probably fits into the state too, to really make them worthwhile. Otherwise, we're not a good use of funds. <laughs> okay, looking for my Maybe. firefighter to chime in there. They, uh, Thank you. About ten or fifteen years ago, at Station Eight, they had on there's a. a, a a telephone pole, or a, yeah. and and they had a, a a camera up there, but it was it was randomly accessible by different people in the city government, so it wasn't monitored continuously. But it was kind of like a precursor yeah. into okay. some type of monitoring system. Okay. Thank you. Obviously, now things are much more advanced. Okay, and on the next slide, um, there are you'll see. Uh, changes obviously in this budget for staffing and related ac uh, allocations um, related to staffing were increased um, uh, again in line with the theme that we launched in 23-24 to provide the resources to get the job done. So uh, we'll go into specifics on the staffing increases a little later. Jay uh, Logan, General Manager Logan will speak to that. Um, and with that, uh, that basically is the highlight of the budget. Uh, key tickler on the changes and now Corey will discuss them uh, by category. Oh, but there is one other thing I wanted to talk about on the next slide. My apologies. Uh, I've mentioned a few times the concept of service area budgets um, and this chart gives a vision uh, of what this could look like as we move to the creation of a redesigned internal reporting model um, in 24-25 and we, we reimagine um, how it could be useful in enhancing the design and presentation of the budget in 25-26. So this is a work in progress, but we wanted to give you an initial view um, of what this would look like and what this could do for us going forward. Um, as we plan to do so, it's important to note that what we provide to the county will never change. The county has a set format, essentially the exhibit that you have in your packet tonight is the format that they need for their systems. But internally, uh, and we started to use that, that this, this um, concept this year when we developed the work plans, we are starting to parse out dollars by service area manager. And then each service area manager is directly giving input into how those dollars can be built to further their initiatives. So in this example on the screen, uh, there's two examples you'll see what we've essentially done is listed the total budget by, in this case, the service area being personnel, just as an example. But we list on there the work plans to show the connection between the dollars and the work plan. Um, there's a, a mission statement, and then there's categorical expenditures. And then behind the scenes internally, um, each service area manager builds the detail that builds this budget. So while we provide the county with a single uh, budget by line item, we also internally can look at um, allocations by service area and then match the dollars with the accomplishments within service areas. So this is where we're going. It, it, you won't see this this year. We're planning for it. It takes a redesign of the financial system, but this is just a vision of where we will be going, hopefully uh, in the next uh, six, 
to 12 to 18 months uh, as we plan this out. And with that, I will hand it off to Corey for the next presentations. Okay, so let us talk revenues. So um, you know, our district revenues uh, are primarily from two sources, the property taxes and the interest income. Um, property tax revenues um, are provided by the County of Santa Clara, and we expect this year, I believe they said it was going to be late December or early January that they will provide us with um, the numbers that you're seeing here for the property taxes. Um, for the purposes of the draft budget, however, we just estimated a tax growth of approximately 3% which results in an overall increase for property taxes in $344,000. Um, it's a conservative estimate based on prior year trends. And it also anticipates the general dampening of real estate activity and an environment of increased interest rates and uncertainties, both in the domestic economy and geopolitical arena. Um, on the other side of the coin, however, our uh, interest income in the preliminary draft budget reflects a notable increase. Um, we saw evidence of this beginning uh, last year's budget, um, and now the fiscal year 25 preliminary budget uh, reflects um, a completely different environment related to investment interest earnings. The uh, um, federal rates have increased, um, and uh, we've seen uh, rate adjustment upwards 11 times over the past year and a half, which has surpassed all prior trends and patterns. So uh, with these new factors, interest income is projected to increase by about 24% um, or 165K, including an assumed moderation of rates as we progress into and through uh, 2024 and 2025. So total revenues are projected at uh, 16. Uh, Two nine million, an increase of three point two two percent, or five hundred and eight thousand over the prior year. But again, these numbers uh, most likely will change once we hear from county. <laughs> uh, no, I think you said it, and I, I missed it. But I'm looking at the. I'm just curious, but the big jump in interest again that happened from twenty two to twenty three. What happened there that our deposits and investments went up so hugely? It's first that our our well fund balance. Uh, continues to, to go up because um, we've shown it looks like a step function happened there yeah, we've we've shown positive increase um, in fund balance for for the last few years but but um, like I said the you know the Fed rates they have just been astronomical levels it's, that's what that uh, represents is yeah, the, me, the interest so, rates on the larger market exactly made the, that big a difference Wow yeah, the interest okay. rates just just uh, skyrocketed so I mean part part of that is that there was more uh, in the commingled funds, that, it's, yeah. Okay, so but it's nothing we did really. It's more the environment that caused it, that. To, exactly. Oops, okay, that's I, what I wanted to know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and if, and if I can mention further to that, if we look at, we are part of the uh, county pool investment, uh, county investment pool, of Santa Clara, and if you look at their interest rates that they were yielding going back eighteen months ago, they were just a fraction of one percent. Uh, if you look at them now, uh, they're closer to three percent. So there's been there's just been an astronomical increase uh, in the rates in a very short period of time. So as the Fed increases, they have followed suit uh, on their yields as well. So it's it's a steep steep incline in interest rates in a very very short period of time. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So I'll move on to Jay to talk about contracts for fire services. Okay. Um, Commissioner Basiji, this is a slide that anticipated your question. <laughs> so these are the contracts for fire services. And um, the district continues to place full focus on supplementing fire services. Contract services with Central Fire account for 34% of the allocated funds, making up a budget of $6.5 million dollars. The additional 8% is allocated for the 24-7 Battalion Chief presence the district has contracted for to further enhance fire protection and response in our jurisdiction. In addition, 6% is supplementally funded by the district for enhanced fire season staffing at Palo Alto Fire Station 8 in the amount of $525,000 and the contingent 
funding for extra fire season staffing and hand crews in the amount of $205,000. And during our conversation prior, we talked about you know, red flag warning and those extra fire, fire help. The total of these allocations make up 48% of the district-wide budget of $8.5 million. This level of funding remains consistent with the prior year budget. So it's going up commensurate with the prior year. Uh, next slide, please. So I can and speak. this fire <laughs> contract services uh, chart now shows you that progression and the various components, the account names, that is this supplemental fire service through various mechanisms that we have that are ex, uh, extra and apart from the fire service agreement with Central Fire. So I have no other comments on that slide. And I will turn the slide. Well, this is a historical and comparative chart. It shows the evolution and the allocations of the fire contract services over a course of several years. Oh, Russ had mentioned in the overview, the prior year budget included the one-time allocation of 2.125 million for the funding of the fire truck. This one-time allocation makes up the main difference between the two years when compared numbers side by side. And then should the fire truck not be paid in June 30th of 20, by June 30th of 24, it will be submitted to the county for rollover. And as we just discussed, as you can see the influence that we get from the, in, the um, investment rate of returns, it does us well to keep the funds in our budget rather than sending them off somewhere else, unless there's a procurement that, that is going to go on and a debt is owed as a result of that, so. Okay. Now maybe you, maybe you said this, but the, the contract services contingency, let me understand that. Is that in case, for example, we had a lot of high fire days and we had to pay more for? Right. Is that, that, that's, what that, that's what that's for? That's what that's for. Mm -hmm. And actually, this last year, we had not very many high right. fire days. Right. Okay. I think I can only remember maybe two. And the thing that takes the pressure off of us is having Fire Station 8 open. Mm -hmm. Because then we have that layer of protection that to me is much a greater enhancement than relying on the fire crews to come in and kind of bolster that. So we do both. Right. Okay. So really nice layering there, but you just don't know, you know, mm -hmm. this is a business where you're making the best guess possible uh, when you're dealing with nature. No, I appreciate having the overhead. I just wanted to understand what that was. Sure. Yeah. I think it's, it's mostly to, um, if you can look at the screen for that extra fire season staffing, um, You'll see since Station 8 opened, we haven't used that um, extra fire season staffing because we had uh, Station 8 covering. But if there is, and hopefully not, but you know, it's somewhere where it, uh, fire station, out, outside of when fire station is staffed, maybe in May, there's a you know red flag day that they're not there. Um, we do have some budgeted uh, for the extra fire season staff, but if we need to go above that, we can, we can dip into our contingency. Okay, so, yeah. thank you. Okay, um, next slide. I think it goes back to Russ. Actually, it goes back, it goes to me to talk oh, about to projects and okay. programs. Yeah. Financial consultant. Yeah. Argus. So, yeah, this is, you know, um, a central focus of, of what we do, um, what our residents know and love about us. So, um, I just want uh, the projects and programs have increased by uh, at 714,700. 714,000, I'm having trouble with numbers today, $700, and it makes up 24% um, of the entire uh, fiscal year 25 budget. Um, so when that's combined with the previously mentioned 48% uh, fire contract service allocations, um, the draft budget before you allocates 72% of available funding for our critical life, property, safety, and prevention um, initiatives. So the 72 reveals a direct alignment to the district mission and the strategic plan, and it's manifested in our service area work plans. Um, this slide is going to show sort of key allocations. Um, obviously the I-280 uh, fuel break implementation for this year, um, we're budgeting or 1 million. Um, this is gonna be a uh, year one of a multi-year project, which will, probably be about approximately 6 million total. Um, our defensible space brush chipping and debris removal program uh, continues to be popular and is just um, the rate of uh, resident participation continues to increase. Um, we're also looking to 
sort of expand our Defensible Space monthly drop-off program. That's something that we really haven't ut utilized. Um, it happens every third Saturday at uh, the um, college, Foothill College. And really, it's something that the town has done for us, and we reimburse the town. But we realized, what there's people coming every month to uh, the um, college. This is a great opportunity for us to, to maybe have staff like uh, Victoria there to talk about the other programs, to talk about the things that we do, to hand out brochures and flyers. So um, we've increased between those two programs, we've increased some uh, funding. Um, and those two will be a total of 1.135. Um, there's also the biomass study that uh, Ryan Cronin has talked about. Um, so we are going to be looking into, um, excuse me, <laughs> we're going to be looking into, you know, uh, taking our biomass um, to one of the local places, as, as Ryan has discussed. And um, so we budgeted roughly 185K mm -hmm. for that as well. Um, Evacuation routes is actually included in that as well. Um, and um, yeah, our evacuation routes is, you know, we went from, I think in the past year, we did what, two or three? And just, you know, the, this last six months alone, we've done three. I think Eugenia has three more planned before the end of this current fiscal year. So um, I, I can't remember the, do you remember the exact number, Russ? Was it eight that she has planned for fiscal year 25? Eight, yeah. I believe we're moving towards eight, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. eight. So um, so that increased. We're looking at um, 809-500. Um, our home ignition zone program, um, as Paige is always talking about at our, our monthly meetings. Um, that's in, actually, it went down a little bit, I think, because we might be looking to do more in-house um, for that program, the assessments um, that get done for the residents. Um, so that actually went down to... 199,250 from 300,000 last year. Um, and then the temporary refuge areas, which is um, a place like up in the open space areas for if there is a disaster, a place where um, fire trucks can set up, where residents can go safely. Um, there, we've, I think, identified a couple areas. Problem is the vegetation is too <laughs> out of control there. So this would be sort of to fund getting the vegetation um, under control there. So that's uh, 75,000. We've also- Can I ask a question on Oh this yeah, first? go ahead. Uh, in terms of um, Interstate 80, 280, mm -hmm. have we done any studies in terms of how the, uh, the layout of the fund over the multi-year comes? It, it, this, in other words, this one million years, a placeholder, one million dollar, is it a placeholder? Was it something that we have more or less line item across the whole? Eugenia year? provided, um, you know, uh, our programs plans and grants manager. She provided to us part as part of the work plan. I mean, a, a list of yeah. I noticed all that the, on the work part of work. Yeah, plan. yeah. So detailed out the point. That exactly. You know she has a detail and all that. Yeah. She. So okay. she's. I mean, this is a really thoughtful um, process to get. It's. It's not just a number that we're throwing out out That's of nowhere it's exactly yeah That's no it's it's Thank you. yeah yeah she's she's thought everything out probably more so than we wanted her to think it out but it's it's yeah. all yeah it's all accounted so for. it's a bottom-up detail not a not a fraction of no, total for, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't know if jay has anything to here. add yeah. <laughs> yeah i get it thank you yeah there's a slide that's coming up that'll show that um yeah and, yes yes Great. Okay. okay. Well, so just, hold that thought. You're always about a slide. Jim is, 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 is the uh, <laughs> seer of uh, the future interview uh, question. There is a slide coming up that will depict that oh, uh, multi-year project. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Sure. Okay. And this is just a continuation. Um, emergency access roads for uh, road hardening and veg vegetation mitigation projects. This is something uh, that um, Denise Gluhan will be uh, working on. So... Um, that's uh, 168, 500 uh, firewise communities um, to support recognition in new areas and uh, renewal for established zones. As you've heard, when Denise <laughs> every month talks about the firewise, she's she's continuing to um, get people signed up, and and you know, I think we went from I can't remember Denise is on the call. I can't remember when we got our first firewise zone. Was it last year? It was just one, and and we're already making ground. I think she has ten that are in progress at the moment so yeah we have Corey we have one last year we have three will be completed this year and we have 
at least seven more beyond that. So yeah, 10. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that got bumped up, um, say $2,000. And um, our emergency cert art supplies um, for the ARC and emergency trailers, safe safety retrofitting, um, additional PPE, 65400 uh, communication and outreach for multimedia communication management of marketing materials got bumped up um, 87,800 and as you've heard from Victoria every month um, just all the the great uh, brochures and flyers and, and outreach that we've been doing um, to our residents so um, it's good to see that bumped up um, our hydrant infrastructure repair maintenance and additions it's been budgeted at 220 we've been lucky in that um, the hits that we've had, we've been uh, recompensated through insurance for them. But um, so it, we're, it, it, it could be higher, could be lower. It's, it's hard to, to guesstimate on that one. Um, but so it's 220 for this year. And then uh, the open space fuel break program, you'll notice that went um, way down from uh, the prior year. And it's because we're just going to... Um, sort of assist with, with the program. We won't actually be doing the work. We'll, um, who's, who's <laughs> for the open spaces, mm -hmm. Sam? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Mid pen, thank you. <laughs> question, question on just the, yeah. this is an accounting question. Uh, for the hydrant infrastructure repairs and so forth, I assume it, it, does it show that we budgeted so many hundreds of thousands last year and we spent a certain amount. Yeah. Then the insurance stuff comes in as a separate revenue for us. So we are, it does show that we're balancing yes. a very unpredictable number. Yeah, but, uh, and yeah. that number also includes the uh, Prisma Hills water main replacements mm. where we add uh, hydrants. That gets to be pretty expensive. Our last uh, invoice was $120,000. Yeah, okay. correct. Yes, exactly. So when they do, that was the depths uh, a water replace main water replacement and there's another one now uh, also on the design table it takes about two years uh, to get those designs going but sometimes Prisma Hills will, will ask for the money up front mm -hmm. um, and at least we sign the agreement so it's good to have the money budgeted right. so that figure is not only replacement of higher hydrants that I have see. been struck but also the water main replacements and you know I always call on past history one fire hydrant struck at uh, Horseshoe Lane, the damage cost was $103,000. Yep. So mm -hmm. they can be $10,000 or they can be, right. you know, quite a bit more than right. that. Right. I'm glad to say that that shows, you know, we don't get dinged for a bad prediction <laughs> because the insurance happened to pay off. So yep. it's just sort of extra money we got us. Yeah. It took us revenue. three years to recoup that because the insurance company, I mean, we had right. to, yeah. That was, in fact, we were set to um, file legal action uh, with the insurance company because they were really, after three years, they still hadn't claimed responsibility for it. And then kind of at the last hour, they did and sent us a check. So uh, when you're dealing with those kind of variables as to what the damages can be, mm -hmm. it can be very broad and very wide. Good. Thank you. Yeah, so sure. I, I can show on this uh, slide here, like, for example, uh, the actual for fiscal year 23. This is the year that we've received that hundred and five thousand dollars back. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, if we had not received that hundred and five thousand dollars back, the expenditures, because this also included the, the depths project, we would have been at uh, two, uh, two hundred forty two dollars, um, yeah, two hundred and forty two thousand dollars for that year. But that one thirty seven actually includes the. Um, 105 refund from what three years ago so that, yeah <laughs> actually that, that's kind of my question i'm i'm i don't want to get into accounting here because what do i know but mm -hmm. i would like i mean it seems like that should show the full expense that we did the fact that we got an insurance payment is great yeah. but i feel like you know it just should show, partly because it shows the effort it took us to go restore things and keep this system running yeah. so i feel like this kind of putting it in there hides the amount of effort and resources needed to keep things going. That's why I was wondering how they were, if they were separated out. Now you're telling me that they are kind of merged here in this. It, it gets merged, yeah. So um, the uh, period 13 report that I do um, after the, that's when I was, what, two months ago after we're audited. Um, if you dig into that, it gives a line by line detail of everything. So you can actually go to the hydrant repair um, account and see every 
every single uh, right. expense for the year. So you can see expense, 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 mm -hmm. expense, and then refund. Um, so I just didn't know if, it, if when it comes to budgeting and I don't know how closely, you know, the, when the county looks at this, you know, do we have to justify the fact that we're budgeting more than what looks like we spent actual when really we did spend more than this? That was, that was my only mm -hmm. question. So that, again, we don't get dinged for having yeah, no. got insurance to pay things off. Um, county really is only looking at the bottom number, the bottom line number for projects and programs. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a, a nice <laughs> thing as well is that we can uh, borrow from right. the accounts within this project and programs. So say we we end up spending only 20000 in in the hydrants, um, then that's an extra $200,000 that maybe we could put towards brush chipping or, you know, so, right. so county's not looking to see for each okay. of these lines, what did you spend? They just want to know, did, you know, okay. did you spend more than for fiscal 4.3 yeah, million? So, okay. Yeah. And that's how the contingency works as well is that we always have the contingency. We, we almost, almost never dip into it. Um, but it's there um, really because we're an emergency <laughs> district. Right. We're, we're our whole, story and our mission is for emergencies. So it's it's hard to budget precisely. And, and Corey, Corey, Corey mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that uh, this chart um, hopefully illustrates what President Screen was looking for in terms of a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, you can see here, uh, particularly for the projects, um, what they were last year adopted and this year, and you can see the increment in growth as well. Right. Um, so this will give you a sense for the fact that we went from 3.5 million to 4.3 essentially, and where those growth um, those growths are. Um, on, on the previous slide, Corey, if you could go back to the previous slide, mm -hmm. I just wanted to underscore the fact that we have asterisks on here and to our guideline to also moderate the budget where we needed to, uh, we did take, we did look at actual expenditures in some line items and reduced accordingly based upon trend. So that's what we mean by moderation if that takes place. And we did that in several areas where the actual expenditures were in fact much lower over the course of several years. So that's where that plays into the, the model as well. Is the motor drive uh, main pressure uh, improvement, is that the one that for $450,000 down on the bottom project and programs? Uh, oh, I, I couldn't quite hear. What was sorry. the? Oh, is, is the mic on? Is the, yeah. Oh, is the mic? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I the very last line item before the um, before the the uh, final sum final final total. There's a four hundred fifty thousand dollar project and program. Is that for motor drive pro pressure improvement? Um. No, that was uh. Th that's the contingency. Which is just um, oh, just an anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. I got it. There's not a yeah. it's not a specified to a particular not a specified item. Thank uh, you. program. Thank yeah, you. it is kind of confusing having the title of it, fiscal year twenty one water flow. Yeah, that, that's because um, that two oh nine seven sixty you see in actual for twenty one that that was actually water flow. So maybe I'll make a note that we move it to a a separate line. It's, it yeah. <laughs> so it's not as confusing. So it doesn't. He walks silly, silly questions like what I just asked. <laughs> Not a silly question. No silly questions Thank at you. all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. And then um, we're going to move on to uh, Russ, who's going to talk more about the I-280. <laughs> okay. So as we started to develop, to develop longer-term views of both our operations and planning and work plans, and budget projections. Um, this chart illustrates, you know, how we are starting to look at things on a multi-year basis. And really the, the ultimate example this year is the I-280 project. So uh, at this point, um, we know the I-280 is gonna be a, a five to $6 million project. Um, and we know it's going to evolve over several years. So what you see in the current year, the current 23-24 was $200,000 placed there essentially to start planning uh, this process. Of course, at the time that we created the budget last year, we weren't sure what the status were of the grants. Um, the million dollars really further enhances the staging and planning 
uh, in fiscal year 24, 25. But we know following that, there's gonna be substantial dollars to bring the project to fruition. Um, so it's, it's still, these numbers are still evolving and the total costs and specific plans really won't be solidified uh, until over the course of the next few months. But it, this chart shows kind of this looking forward planning that we're trying to go through on a project of this scale. Um, we think the numbers related to the I-280 project will certainly change as we engage engineering studies and project planning refinements over the course of the next several months. But we feel confident the one million dollars at least will get the process started and allow us allow us to stage and plan accordingly. So this is the best we can give you right now on the I two eighty. There's still a lot more work to be done, but we feel confident it it initiates and further pushes the the project forward under the assumption that it's going to be internally funded, which I believe that's the direction that we're going in. That's it for that slide, Corey. Okay, moving on to additional staffing. Um, I'd like to note here the additional staffing. The draft 2425 budget requests additional staffing furthering the theme stated last year to get resources on board to deliver services in both a timely and complete manner. We've made great headway in the current year with the hiring of a field manager, a general analyst, a technical analyst, and a part-time projects operation manager. For FY2324, also saw the reclassification of, the, of a finance manager from the prior authorized budget manager position with a focus on longer-term planning, policy development, and technology. To date, only the full-time technical analyst the operations manager and the events coordinator position remain unfilled, but they are being actively pursued. In the area of the IHFR program, we are requesting an additional one FTE project specialist the reclassific and the reclassification of the current grant specialist 0.5 position to a full-time IHFR specialist. These are prompted primarily by the resource demands that come with taking on the I-280 project while still maintaining momentum on the other projects. This empowers the IFHR pr uh, program with an additional 1.5 FTEs. This budget also proposes increasing the current event coordinator position from a 0.5 to a full um, time position to bolster support to community education, community outreach service areas. Additionally, the addition of a 0.5 project operation manager position now held and funded through the operations manager savings will secure the important position to support the community education HIC enhancement, community education and specialized project support. The budget also proposes the addition of a new administrative specialist to assist with overall support and strategic plan implementation. So those are my notes on that slide. If you have any questions or I'll just roll down to the next um, slide, Corey, which then depicts the uh, chart. This chart reflects the budgetary changes related to the proposed staffing enhancement as just discussed it brings the total FTE count to 13.5 from current our current 10, and the cost is $464,000 for those uh, additional positions. Any questions on staffing? We, we took a modest approach this year, um, feeling that we bulked up last year. We still have positions to fill. We still have people in the queue that we're looking at and um, to bring in. So it's really kind of that mix of getting people in and um, seeing how the projects then emerge from that, particularly the I-280. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd say on the I-280, we're doing a little bit of a transition between having it written for a grant application, right. Cal OES FEMA. Now we're retooling how we're looking at it for a, a district uh, operation and project. Mm -hmm. which, so we're changing the language, changing the perspective from a grant operation to an in-house district operation. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, that's it on staffing, thank you. Yeah. Actually, um, <laughs> uh, question, oh. yes. This is just a curiosity. Uh, 
you have a, a new project specialist, and then you also have a project operations manager. Yes. What is the difference between a specialist and a ma op operations manager? Yes, uh, thank you for asking that. The ops manager has been on the budget, I think, now four years. Yeah. yeah. We've not been able to fill it. That's not an operations in the field, not an operations in the field manager. It's an operations internal. So it would be like a COO okay. position, right. like a chief operating officer. Helping the, the general manager. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank and, you. And um, you know, for um, succession planning and for just depth in the field, just depth on the bench. That's what that operations manager is. So the field specialist, the project specialist, all of those are out in the field and they're doing projects out there. Um, and so the only one internal to a COO, you know, heading up the agendas, doing, you know, just the myriad of kinds of things that need to be done would be that COO position. Not been able to find a person who's, you know, really come forward yet. And we did a recruitment on it too. Very difficult position to fill because it takes sure. pretty high level skills and having no benefits in an agency is a deterrent. So we're trying to put that all in place and that's gotta be high on our agenda is to get that position filled. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I wanted to also point out, um, so um, when we hired Paige Russell, um, she came at, we had already established our current year, the fiscal year 24 budget. She's being funded under the operations manager right now, um, which is why you see the actual for fiscal, we, we did have in fiscal year 22, we had Dave Barnett, um, so that was his salary, but then Paige came along. Um, we didn't have a employee classification for project operations manager, which is what she is. So she's currently being funded um, under the operations manager, even though she is not <laughs> an operations manager. It's just, um, we kind of had our hands tied there. So this item here, the project operations manager, we're, we're finally adding that position for fiscal year 25. So it's a little confusing because yeah, she, she, she missed the cut or she, you know, we, we didn't want to miss her, miss out on her obviously. So we're, we're funding her how we can. Um, and then I just wanted to also um, point out, obviously these items in, in orange are um, the new items. Um, we still have, well, except for the employee benefits placeholder, um, we still have that in place. Uh, it's it's been lowered to uh, three hundred and eighty thousand to accommodate the benefit study that is planned uh, for the remainder of the year, and then hopefully get some benefits for the employees. Um, we also introduced a new item: this um, salary labor um, market contingencies in the amount of one fifty eight zero thirty three, and that's uh, given the extremely tight hiring conditions that have plagued the marketplace um, and allows for uh, dollar contingencies needed to onboard staff if needed during the process. Is that calculated as a percentage of some, of some sort? It Hence is. The, the weird number? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a strange number because it is, it's a percentage of, Russ, do you recall? Yes, yes. It's, yeah. it's roughly, it's roughly 5%. I see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a roughly a five percent number, and really because we know it's so difficult to bring people on board, having that contingency available um, really works to our benefit. So, mm -hmm. but that's the general percentage. Yeah. And also wanted to point out um, the new project specialist position, which um, is a uh, full time position, and the new admin specialist position, full time position. We're going to assume that it's it's a mid year higher so they um were just budgeted right. for half a year um and then this page here ties up everything so everything that you saw on the previous page is this this top line here uh the permanent employees and then all of the um we have our temporary and seasonal employees ot and all the taxes um so basically all together for uh, total salaries, benefits, payroll taxes, um, we're at 2.98 million compared to uh, 2.5, which is what we budgeted in fiscal year 24, which is an increase of 464K or 18%. And any other questions on, I, I flipped, but any other questions on the salaries and yeah, okay. 
So I'm going to move on to our professional services um, and our contract service consultants. This makes up 5% of our total uh, bu budget for the preliminary fiscal year 25 um, expenditures and includes within it that district-wide EIR that um, was talked about for 100K. That's actually out in part of this here, the outside professional services. Um, strategic planning and HR support, which is roughly 105K. Um, IT enhancements and initiatives, about um, $80,000. Uh, mapping and GIS, about $66,000. Videography and photography, about $36,000. Um, and then a uh, contract rental for CMS LED signage and portable washrooms, that's like for the evacuation routes, uh, $21,000. So um, our outside professional services does show a decrease of 25% from the fiscal year 24 budget. Um, and this is because we're taking away one-time costs for the website upgrades of 75,000 and the fire facility assessment study, which was 150K. Um, and those are planned to be spent in the current fiscal year. If they're not, then we will again look into county for a rollover of those funds. And then the uh, independent contractor consultants, um, those that's like um, individuals like Sarah Hendricks, um, Andrew Constantine, who who's not with us anymore. So that that number went went down. Um, and I think oh, okay. So any questions about professional services and consultants? Okay, I'm gonna go on to um, our operations, which is three percent of the total budget. Um, I think key changes here are the uh, liability insurance and workers comp insurance amounts. Um, they're increasing, obviously, due to uh, staffing increases, um, some labor reclassifications, um, then our office expenses. Those are uh, going up a little bit, and that's due um, to, again, the more staff <laughs> means more office supplies. Um, now, these, are, um, these increases are offset by a $50,000 decrease under the maintenance structure and grounds. Um, and that's, again, given that one-time parcel development study, which we hope to get done in the current year. But again, if it does not happen in the current year, we'll look to roll over that uh, 50 k of funding. And so I think that is it for operations. Are there any questions on those items? Okay, and then we will move on then to the capital, which Russ will talk about. Okay, the, the chart uh, before you list capital assets being requested, and there's several noteworthy items. Um, the first thing I wanna mention is that the current year budget includes the purchase of a F-150 truck and a cargo van. And for the fiscal year 24, Five budget, uh, we also are, are anticipating and requesting the purchase of one additional truck and a small SUV to support field and community uh, education operations. But this budget is different uh, if you look at the dollar amounts in that it is proposing a transition from our purchase to a commercial lease model uh, for both the current year and the new year vehicles. And we're doing this to streamline the procurement pro uh, process, quite honestly, and to phase costs over time under a low cost of ownership model. So what you'll see projected in the costs here is there are two additional vehicles, but we propose uh, purchasing them on a lease basis, typically a 48 month lease that's covered fully by warranty uh, and includes maintenance. So that is the proposal uh, in the um, vehicle arena. You'll notice that the facility and health safety and maintenance allocation decreased by $75,000. Last year, we had the flooring replacement over at El Monte. So we basically took out that one-time cost and reduced that line item uh, accordingly. Um, we also have two disaster readiness uh, equipment requests for a combined amount of $300,000. Uh, $250,000 is for the supplemental funding of an AI fire detection equipment. Uh, a, a detection system, which I mentioned earlier. 
and $50,000 for portable disaster facility equipment layout. We don't know quite what that looks like yet, but we envision um, several laptops, terminals, um, uh, media screens, and things of that nature where staff can congeal during a disaster and uh, get out information to the public. Lastly, um, $35,000 is requested for the purchase of a document management system. And this is specifically to address the public search capabilities that we spoke of, that we've had comments on from the public and spoken about in the past. Uh, a document management system would enable us to effectively archive all our documents in digital format internally, uh, index them, but more importantly, would allow us to frame it up through the, through the website and then allow for search capabilities in a much more effective manner. So we're looking at that uh, possibility as well for 24, 25. So that pretty much uh, summarizes our capital requests for the new year. Okay. I don't know if there were any questions on that or. Well, I guess now, I think now's the time for me to raise one question. I think we've got to the end of the financial size. I kept waiting for what well, we finally mentioned at the end here was the uh, fire facilities assessment project. But I didn't see anything on here in terms of capital projects in terms of either district parcel or El Monte station. And obviously the, the uh, fire facilities assessment project is a, leading project that goes into that. But you know, it may roll over, it may not, we'll see, but there's nothing planned beyond that. How do we, um, you know, it's a pet project. Uh, I know, and I know it'll get, I know it will get brought up, if not by me, by other right. commissioners as well. So you're just referencing the district parcel? Yeah. Yeah. So district parcel right now, as we look at I-280, one of the big issues we're going to have to deal with is staging. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And, you know, so I'm thinking, okay, we'll do a study, but then we're going to use it for maybe a year or two for staging. Mm. So that's kind of taking a priority and thinking about when the construction starts, where all the equipment, where the um, mobile units are going to go, where the chain link fence is going to be put. I um, so I think you're going to see that district parcel maybe being used as a okay. staging device. I, sure. I accept that response. I think that should be called out specifically. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, it kind of goes to the question about how much detail do we know about it? That's actually a lot of detail, but I think, it's, and that's part of, you know, part of discussing this with commission is to um, discuss the, the big emphasis that doing yeah. 280 will be and how much work has gone into understanding it. I think mentioning that, you know, one of the, the ways to make that feasible is that we'll, get, we'll be using the parcel for staging will prevent questions like mine about what are we going to do with, with the parcel. Yeah. Another option, of course, is to look at that parcel for the highest and best use, which right. from my perspective is, a, is building a new fire station. I'm with you on that. Yeah. And then having the rationale as to why to do that and uh, putting together Annex 4, mm -hmm. putting to, uh, reading the LAFCO study, pulling those, those uh, very important documents together, it clearly shows that Los Altos Hills has the highest response times of any of the agencies in Central Fire, and we're scheduled to grow by 14%. I mean, if you look at infill, would you like to live in Los Altos Hills if you think about infill? Because mm -hmm. it's not an urbanized area. It's on one acre parcels, and you pull in SB 9 and 10, mm -hmm. you're going to have some building and development that's going to go on. Um, that, that probably is going to happen over time. 14% is what LAFCO said is going to occur. And yet you've got the highest response times that's now going to beg some issues mm -hmm. as to how to use that parcel and the, the likelihood and the feasibility and just the practical reasons for building a new fire station. Well, is there, um, if not, it's, if it's being used for staging for the next year or okay. so, that's fine. But you know, if we assume the facilities assessment plan comes off on a reasonable schedule, what would the next step be that we might want to a budget for, you know, architectural, um, you know, is there something to, to put in here? Uh, again, you know, I know we don't like to put things in that we really can't get to, so I'm not trying to force us to, yeah. to cause I know that's right. One of the focuses here is to not put projects on here that we're not really, we don't think we have that, the time to get to. And also not put projects on there that aren't properly queued up. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the fire station's properly queued. Right. Uh, I'm right. trying to get 
I-280 queued. Mm -hmm. And that occurred because we were talking grant for two years. Right. So that's definitely in, because we're a dependent district of the county. Mm -hmm. Before any of this gets spent, it's gonna go through the county OBA and then to the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. And in putting a million dollars into I-280, that's if the budget gets approved and right. adopted by the Board of Supervisors. So that's pretty well cued, I think, to move into the budget rounds with OBA and um, the Board of Supervisors for 24-25. I'm not quite that confident yet about the uh, fire station. I understand. Okay. And so I'd like to get a little more traction on that first before we then be so bold as to budget for it. Right. Okay. And, you know, talk it through. But for the district parcel, I mean, I'm... I think it could be practical to do both. We could mm -hmm. stage and certainly do architect architectural design. Um, Toby, you've got a lot more. You've, yeah. you've got a lot more experience with building fire mm -hmm. fire stations than most people do sitting here at this dais. So, um, but we, I could see that we could do both. You know, in tandem. Okay. Um, so mostly, I think a note. I think that should be in presenting this whenever it gets presented. That's, I think that's, a, that's the right place to state that is that. You know, bringing 280 project to fruition in this very detailed way, you know, there's there are plans for using the parcel be for staging. Somewhere yeah, the, the yeah, exactly. Plan, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, there's a possibility we could stage at Foothill. You know, I, I'm right now. I think it's fine. No, I think I think it's fine to, to plan. I think uh, I accept that answer, right? But I think it's a good answer to to give in earlier. I'm also in conversations trying to find us a uh, space to where we can start uh, putting staff. Okay. different than city hall or town yeah. hall here yeah. and the fire station. So I'm, I'm talking with okay. Foothill college that's been Great. going on total change of um, oh. administrators there made some more traction. So well, I, hopefully I, um, we can do something there. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't those wanna... to me are the three heavy hitters. I 280 uh, a fire station and someplace for Great. staff to reside. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Um, uh, and I will, one small item, given that we've moved away, we're moving away from specific items, is that uh, I think and also the information about why the HIZ rebate program is less yes. uh, uh, would be best to somehow state yes. up front early because that, that's right. one that will raise questions as well. Um, uh, I, I get there's reasoning behind it, but I think that reasoning should be called out in yep. presenting it. But, uh, but again, that, that, those are the numeric questions. I knew everybody's now are moving to the dates, which is something I'll have other comment on. Right. Well. And this is really helpful to us because we've been, we being the fiscal team, have been so immersed in all this data and all of this, this forethought. We need the fresh eyes, you know, mm -hmm. the three of you, the comments, the guidelines, the questions mm -hmm. to help kind of push us out of our thinking, right. you know, our already built filters mm -hmm. into what, what, what does the commission need to hear? What does the public need to hear? Mm -hmm. How do we um, really present the best foot forward when it comes to being endowed with a very nice budget right. and then the expenditures and a good track record and how we've spent those allocations? And then pulling the gap down between, we're always talking about how much we can do, but then when we implement it, there's this gap between expen you know, allocations and the actual expenditures, pulling those down. Because I think that shows a, a more fiscally responsible and professional organization. And I'm sure Russ can speak to that also. Well, moving forward to the um, back on the slide where we were with the dates, because that kind of raises my uh, next question, which is, and you touched on it again as well, in terms of, you know, in terms of presenting this information. Um, let me ask, and maybe I'm getting ahead of things. I'm wondering what the goal for the November meeting is in presenting it, because it's hard to, you, you, just pull a little thread out of a sweater. Yes. Um, and I don't think we want to go, or, or I should say that, um, especially when you add four more of people here, you know, mm -hmm. at the commission level asking questions, you know, what would you like to, and, and still at a draft level, you know, a week from now, what, what do you want to get from a first introduction to that? Because I think if you had this whole presentation in a week from now, it's going to be a long meeting, which I'm saying we should, not saying we shouldn't do it because it depends on what you're interested in getting out of it. And I mean, yeah, I so um, I was asked that question and I said I wanted to sit through the ad hoc committee meeting first <laughs> to find what information we got from here. You've given us really good direction and really good information. Um, 
I think what I would suggest for the 21st is to make it very brief because I know the commission based upon its, its proximity to Thanksgiving would like it to be a short meeting. We're ready to go with pretty much consent items mm -hmm. and action items that need to be taken right. place with, with very few reports. This could be a very subtle, you know, very short report that simply says, commissioners, please read the packet, be ready for a robust presentation at the uh, January 16th commission meeting, but that's it because then it gets turned over to OBA February 2nd. Yeah, I think, I think that um, I'm not trying to make any additional work for you guys. I'm, I think that some of the key themes we've discussed, or not even themes, that's the wrong word, the key items that we focus on with questions are the things I most want everyone to understand. I think for, for example, you know, everyone likes seeing, you know, what's changed mm -hmm. just at, at a high level, at a high level. But then I don't think everyone needs to dive down to the, the key, the, the numbers. I don't think they're ready to do it. I don't think they want to do it yet. So I, I don't think it buys you anything to, to dive into those numbers, but what we really do want, and I'm just brainstorming this by the way. So I'm looking for approval is um, I, would, I would want all the commissioners to have heard things like, you know, um, we're, we're pivoting to really focus on 280. We've got the details there. Um, you know, that's where the emphasis are. Or, or picking up all these additional evacuation routes, hiring to support those things, you know, seeing that's kind of the high level flow of where things are going. You know, HIZ, you know, HIZ, you know, because there's a, there's a, a substantive change there, not a numeric one. You know, I don't think anyone's, everyone's fine, be fine, the number's less, but understanding that the reason why you might want the rebate program to be less is because we're, we, you want to do things more internally. Um, you know, that's the kind of interesting themes which people would either want to go, yeah, I agree with, or wait a second, let me raise my hand now early before you get too far down the road. Um, I know I'm, I'm speaking kind of vaguely. I'm, I'm because uh, I hate, I think there's something valuable to be accomplished next week without having commissioners' eyes glaze over when they don't want to go into all the levels of detail that are here and that ultimately we do need to go to. So I want to make sure, I, I don't want to, I don't want it to make it sound like um, we're not willing to do the heavy work. I just think that, I don't know if, if the, you know, I think there's a level of, maybe it's not 10,000 feet, but maybe it's 5,000 feet where all the key decision points can be brought out um, and the numbers can be provided so they can be looking at them and, and raising questions outside of the meetings um, and ready for January because assuming December meeting is probably canceled because that's, right. that's our usual. Right. Um, Just like a summary of the highlights. So can I? Yeah, that's, not, that's easier said than done. So I recognize that what I'm asking. I don't want to be asking something that's not possible. Perhaps uh, the fiscal team and the three mm -hmm. ad hoc could meet and we could take this, I think yes. it's a 27 page uh, slide deck mm -hmm. and shrink it down mm -hmm. to maybe nine or 10 slides mm -hmm. with very high level key and then say, is this a good depiction? I'd be happy to, to review Absolutely. that kind of thing. Yeah. I think we need another review, yeah. not in a public setting like this, but just roll up our sleeves, you know, yeah. you know, on a zoom meeting and, uh, Absolutely. and we'll take what we've pulled together from tonight, synthesize down the slide deck present it to you and, you know. Right, because I mean, you know, yeah. yeah. I agree, I mean, to me, what it stood out about the whole thing was who she was tapping. I feel it would be an issue for the audience to talk to. Those are the things that I just really, I, I just think they, they are, <laughs> you know, and I think, I suspect that most other people have a similar impact. Mm -hmm. What is it, what is it that she's thinking about to kind of get it? Right. Is it, one other thing that stood out for me Yeah, I think it's I, th I think it's diminished uh, a bit now as the district has 
really taken on the credibility. And I think as people recognize the importance of fire safety in wooey areas and where this location is, and the fact that we've got the highest response, we've got building that's gonna be going on, we're really sitting kind of, you know, at a precarious point in our history. So if you put I-280 in there and building a fire station, yeah, that kind of solves a lot of problems. Yeah. So I'd rather concentrate and have the commission concentrate on those big ticket items and what we can do for this local community because it does affect regionally what's gonna happen. And then we get into the wildfire detection early warning system. Yeah, we can participate regionally there. So I think it's a mix, you know, doing the fire station aid again. I think we've got some really the right ingredients to where we can conduct business as a good professional organization seen as credible and viable in the county. And um, my conversations with county have really taken that that next step forward. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased for that. Question? Thank you. And, I, and to back to your original question, which is I'm more than willing to and happy to yeah. be involved and, and be helpful as what we are here to do yeah. to help you yeah. put this into a form that, that uh, and again, I, I'm coming from a biased point that I'm looking for. Well, I, I like what you're saying because see, to me, we're making progress now. Right. Because this is generally the report that goes to the full body of the commission. Mm -hmm. Why do they need to hear it? If they've appointed three members that they have you know, ultimate confidence in, we've got a, a consummate firefighter here, we've got the president of the board, we've got a public advocate, the three of you can hear all of this as you did tonight and then say, mm -hmm. okay, good job, let's go. Now get it down to you know, the, the high level, here's what we're interested in. You know, Commissioner Basidji said it well, I-280 staffing, IHFR. That aligns with strategic plan, it aligns with Annex 4, which is a critical document for us. And voila, there we are. Now these the seven member commission, three of you know, you're three of them, will hear this and say, okay, fine. And I think that's what's important to have mm -hmm. commission uh, consent on is the overall strategic direction that this budget really reflects, and we're the same things: 280, the IHFR. You know, these are where this is where we're moving. Our, this is where we're putting our emphasis. Um, this is where you know we're putting our de emphasis. This is how we've thought out how they intermix. This is where how staffing goes to for growth, and having that approval. Because if they don't go for that, then the numbers they're not going to go for the numbers. And I assume that I, like you, I think that that will it will be well received. But you'll probably get people. Someone may be saying, "Hey, let's build a fire station this year." You know, there'll be that kind of thing. But that's at a high level, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the that's what I'd like to come away next week with is everyone's consent that this is the right direction. Let the numbers work out, however they work out. But if you're telling me you got a plan to do one sixth of the 280 plan next year, and you've really worked the details on that, and this is how it adjusts the numbers, mm -hmm. that's what I want them to 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 feel uh, invested in. I think it'll actually help when it comes to January and we are asking them to look at all the numbers that they really, that they already sort of know what brought them there. So yeah. anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm, so I'm. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking like the construction of the fire station that's a multi-year project and you need to get the citizens excited about it. Mm -hmm. If the fire excited about it, you need to get everybody on board and then it's just what it is that brought, you know, site approval. Yeah. And, And things are staged out even multi year, you know, yeah. specifically multi year. And there comes a time, too, and I think this is the year to do it, 24 25, to kind of take a breath and say, we've been on a very steep trajectory. Yes. And okay, let's not just keep spending more, spending more, and getting the bigger and built a delta between what we allocate and what we actually mm -hmm. achieve. Let's try to pull that down, kind of even out the plane a little bit, go with what we know are our tried and true programs. We know what those are. The ones that are coming up, take the time to take a deep breath and really do the staging and the preparation, the I-280, the fire station, you know, those, and make sure that we don't rush to an end, that we do it very methodically and very practically and with good process. Because you build something in a community, you know, 
believe me, I know, I built those structures. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's change for people, even though it could be change for the better, it's still change. Mm -hmm. And so that needs to be very, very carefully uh, planned and programmed. Yep. And okay. um, so with that. Okay. You can go back to... Anything else you can enlighten us uh, with? No, we can, we can, I, I, that was a long digression from the slide. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I want to. I, I, I want to thank you for that too, because what I'm basically hearing is that stay with the the big themes, um, the big concepts, um, and the major um, the major initiatives in the budget as a basis for discussion at a very high level, and that will frame the discussion. So we can certainly put that together and then get your feedback on it this week. That would be mm -hmm. that would be wonderful. Yeah, and, and I'd like to just, just kind of strike out here and read you something that I think is very potent, and that is we're talking a lot about I-280 programs, projects, all of that. In my view and my vision, that's a means to an end, and the means to the end is something I'd like to read to you, and I call this the principle for interaction with residents. Why do we have all these programs? Well, it's for fire safety, but we also have them for another reason, and this, I think, really captures this. By having a working relationship with residents before disaster strikes, trust can be built between the resident and local government. That earned trust will help the resident be more amicable and cooperative with their local government when the time calls for working together during a disaster until help arrives. Essentially, by building those resident relationships through the programs we have, we are creating a form of disaster preparedness. So if somebody says, why do you have all these great programs? I'll go, yeah, we want to forestall nature. Yeah, we want to you know, protect life and property. But yes, we want to build those very tender trust relationships with our residents. So when disaster strikes, they will lean to us and we say evacuate or we'll say take shelter and they will know it's coming from a reliable and trustful source. And that is disaster preparedness. Empowering them to, to be a part of that trust relationship. And that was written by one of our staff members. So I'm very, very proud of that statement. Yes, but in terms of God forbid, in case of a day of emergency, how do we? What is our role vis-a-vis -vis the role of the town? I know that Victoria is involved with the emergency preparedness committee and all that, and she's she's just a principal there with with the uh, with the, some of the members there. But the question is, how do we how do we together perform the role that 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 short paragraph mentioned? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we saw that during the events in December through March, right. where we truly had, you know, an event going on that was an emergency event. And Victoria worked around the clock. She not only was the liaison with the county OEM, um, and we were on those phone calls sometimes two, three times a day, right. days at a time that went on for months, literally. Uh, but also then working with the, the local emergency center, EOC, and the town, and helping with the town. So, Victoria, I'll just, you know, with that, turn it over to you because you're our emergency services manager, and you are skilled at this. Um, sure, yeah. I, I think there's also some progress that we've made in the last year or so um, where we have started to really integrate with our allied partners and agencies, um, and that is a direct result of um, the training and and the, um, the education that I've gone through and I've been able to reach out and, and provide that support. So we really look at ourselves as the support to the town and also help them, um, you know, make some of those decisions that they need to make alongside, you know, op I'm more of operational. So, um, you know, my, my job also is liaison between um, our CERT group who volunteers and helps during those times um, and then the operations area for the town. So um, I have little roles in different different groups that are coming together now to really have a really forward thinking idea of how we're going to um, to respond to, to the hopefully never, but there will be something I'm sure that will come up um, in disaster preparedness. So I think that's um, been been really progressive. It's hard to explain it if if um, 
and I think during with the EPRC and what they're asking for with after action reports and things like that, I'm hoping that next time that we go through this, we'll be able to really connect the residents to what was being done in the background. Because I think that's really where there's a, a lack of understanding. And that's kind of what Jay was alluding to. I think really mm -hmm. strengthening that trust in us um, because I have, I have seen that there, that trust was not there during the inclement weather. Unfortunately, I think you've heard it too. And some of, some of the members and meetings we've been at. So um, I think that's really something that's always the forefront of my mind is how can I really do that? And then we also, our communication to residents is super important too. So not only were we educating, um, you know, uh, staff on what was going on, keeping them abreast of the situation, we are trying to work with the town and work with uh, County OEM and pushing out really trusted resources and information um, on a pretty, pretty daily, if not multi-times a day consistency. Do you think you have enough staff to do the job on the on the day of reckoning? <laughs> well, I I did. I was one of the ones that asked for an event person because that that <laughs> really um, I'm I'm like to you know, I like to run around, but I'm getting kind of old and it's kind of hard to run around. <laughs> um, so yeah, it takes a lot of work. Um, that's why I really strengthen those relationships um, before. So you kind of work together and have a good plan. Really takes a lot of the the mental anguish of trying to get through and train as you go. So really prevention, we talk about preventing fires. We really try and prevent an internal operational fire, so to speak, when these things come up. So it is all about that pre-relationship and building those networks prior to, um, that really does help. Okay, thank you. And we can never have enough staff. Just <laughs> my little. I'm sorry to take this long detour, but no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I noticed that actually we talk about the calendar later in the agenda. So I'm going to um, wait, hold off until that. Um, if we just want to continue with the agenda, which is actually the next thing is public comment, but we don't have any public here anymore. So oh. <laughs> I, we could probably just skip the public comment section. Yeah. We just ask if we have any public comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chair. <laughs> Welcome. I think we're good. And do we have any public comment? Not seeing any. <laughs> yes, you can yeah, go to the bottom sentence of that one. Yeah. Okay, so let me share the screen again and we'll go over the calendar. And this is sort of a, uh, a mixture of um, the LAHCFD calendar and incorporating uh, the county calendar, how it incorporates together. Um, so the key dates, obviously tonight's meeting, uh, next week on Tuesday the 21st, as we've discussed, we will uh, have a draft uh, to the full commission. Then uh, January 16th uh, will be the bigger discussion, um, really heavy hitting discussion, because after the 16th, we don't have a meeting between our, our January 16th meeting and the February 2nd due date for a draft to the Office of Budget Analysis. So um, the way that it usually works is that even though OBA has that uh, February 2nd due date, they are flexible, we're, we're small enough that they're flexible to us that if by the uh, meeting, which our meeting is February 20th, the February meeting, there are small changes. Um, so I think last year we had the change of adding the fire, we had it, we had, well, it wasn't a small change certainly, but it was, it was a collaboration between us and Central Fire. We, we added that line item for the, the truck um, after we had already submitted to open, that's fine. They allow for, they understand that February 2nd is a, is a very early date. So um, they do allow us, um, and then they, they make changes as well, actually, to revenues. Um, so what you see on January 16th and what you approve, there might be small changes to revenues, um, that sort of thing. And then, so you'll see a sort of final 
draft <laughs> final final draft budget on the 20th which is um, when you approve that and that is what then gets uh, reviewed by the board of commissioners at their budget workshops which are uh, this year may third well next year 2024 may 13th through the 15th um, then they have their budget the board of supervisor budget hearings june 10th 11th and 12th um, on the 12th is when the board of supervisors will approve the fiscal year 25 budget and then that comes back to the commission on June 18th, 2024, where we adopt our final budget as adopted by the Board of Supervisors. So these are the key calendar dates. The real question is what's happening between, in March and April, what are they doing with our budget before the workshops happen? That is the county executive, uh, county executor um, is reviewing our budget okay. and, Hopefully not making change. Right, but they're, uh, they may be yeah. giving us feedback during that time or asking questions and exactly. working on it during those two months. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, there might be something, um, it didn't happen last year, but you know, we, we put the benefits under, right. uh, it's under permanent salaries. And we thought that our OBO representative would say, no, no, that needs to be its own line. So that it, at, at that time where they say, you know, they, they talk about what are your one time, what are your ongoing, this would probably be about when we talk about, start to talk about rollovers possibly, um, but that might not be till July. But um, yeah, it's more the in, internal workings of um, That's putting, the final, yeah, putting the final bow on, on it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. And so that, yeah, that is your calendar. So all right, other questions you. about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. No questions. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Financial Consult Consultant Vargas. We'll now move on to item three, adjournment. Mm -hmm. uh, this concludes the November 14th, 2023 meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners Ad Hoc Budget Subcommittee. The meeting is adjourned at uh, 2100 hours. It's nine o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could, uh, Emergency Services Manager BB, please stop the recording. <laughs>